Can the moon fall to earth? An apple falls from a tree, a pencil from a table, and you from your bike if you're not paying attention to the road. So if Earth's powerful gravitational force pulls everything toward it, how is it possible that the moon doesn't fall as well? And could it ever happen? From one point of view, the moon is actually falling toward Earth. The Earth pulls it with its gravity, just like everything else around it. However, the moon perfectly balances its fall by orbiting around the Earth. In other words, there are many more forces at play here. The Earth and Moon attract each other and also orbit a shared center of mass, located deep beneath the planet's surface. This creates a centrifugal force that balances out the gravitational pull. Everything is calculated absolutely precisely. If the Moon moved just a little more slowly, it could theoretically fall. But don't worry. Due to the complex interaction of tidal forces, caused by the mutual effects of the Moon, Earth, and the Sun, the Moon actually moves away from us by about 4 centimeters each year. How is the age of stars determined? Stars live a life similar to that of humans. From birth to active life to death. We can determine the age of humans relatively easily, but what about stars? How old is a star? To solve this tricky question, astronomers rely on many pieces of information. One clue is size. The larger a star, the more radiant energy it needs and the sooner it uses up its stellar fuel. The largest and hottest blue-white stars can shine for only 10 million years, while the smallest and coolest reddish ones can live actively for as long as 50 billion years. Therefore, large blue-white stars never age because they exhaust themselves very quickly and move on to the next phase of their lives. They become red giants and then cooling white dwarfs. The oldest stars in the universe can be identified by their chemical composition. For example, they lack iron, which was absent shortly after the Big Bang. Older stars also rotate more slowly because they are gradually slowed down by magnetic fields. The age of a star is always an estimate, and in the vastness of the universe, a few million years doesn't really matter. How many artificial satellites orbit the Earth? If you ever set out on a journey around our planet, make sure to study the rules of space traffic carefully. Orbit isn't some quiet country road, it's more like a heavily trafficked highway. The first satellite is Sputnik, which launched into space on October 4, 1957. Although it burned up in the atmosphere a few months later, it now has about 9,000 successors. Even though some of them have also ceased to exist, more than 5,000 are still orbiting the Earth. Roughly half of them are functional, the rest no longer communicate and make up so-called space debris. If we had discarded parts of carrier rockets and fragments, Created when these objects collided or exploded, we end up with about 20,000 objects larger than 10 centimeters and more than 100,000 larger than a centimeter. There are millions of the tiniest pieces in orbit, and altogether they create a proper fog around the planet. That mainly gets in the way of astronomers observing the stars. Will light travel through space forever? The glow of some stars traveled for billions of years before it was seen by our eyes or Earth-based telescopes. And from us, it will continue on. Will it keep traveling, and thus shining, forever, or can something stop it? Light differs fundamentally from sound. Sound cannot travel endlessly, because it is carried by vibrations in the material or medium it passes through. Part of the energy is converted into heat by the vibration of the particles in that medium, and the sound wave gradually fades away. Light, on the other hand, can travel through empty space, it doesn't need any carrier. Its energy doesn't decrease or disappear, regardless of how far it has already traveled. If light were to travel through a perfect vacuum and didn't encounter any object, it would theoretically travel forever. However, since it spreads out in all directions along the way, the intensity of the source weakens from our perspective, just like sound. Which is actually a good thing, because if the light from a giant star reached us in all its full brilliance, we would go blind in an instant. How long is a galactic year? Our Earth year lasts about 365 days. However, it is not the only year that determines our cosmic time. Just as the Earth orbits the Sun, the entire solar system orbits the center of our galaxy. So how long does it take to complete one lap? The galactic year is, compared to the Earth year, quite a bit longer. 
If we waited for Christmas according to it, we would get to celebrate it only once every 240 million years on average. And that's even though the Sun, along with its planets, rushes through space at a speed of 217 kilometers per second, seven times faster than the Earth orbits the Sun. It truly has a massive distance to cover. Its orbit is close to a circle with a radius of 25,800 light years. That's why, in the lifetime of our star, not many galactic years have passed, the center of the Milky Way has been orbited only about 18 times so far. Can we fly to a distant star? While the future mission to Mars has been talked about for a long time, thoughts about traveling to nearby stars still belong more to fairy tales. Is such a space trip really unrealistic for humanity? The nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is 4.2 light years away from Earth. For comparison, this is nearly 10,000 times farther than the distance from Earth to Neptune, which the Voyager 2 probe, launched in 1977, traveled in 12 years. Of course, technology has advanced since then. However, if we take the fastest probe to date, the Parker Solar Probe, which in 2018 reached a speed of 247,000 km per hour on its way to the Sun, and assume it would travel at that speed for the entire journey, it would reach Proxima Centauri in about 18,000 years. However, scientists are optimistic. For example, Spanish astronomer Guillem Anglada Escudé believes that by the end of the century, we will have the means to send a probe to another star in 1,000 years. Russian scientist Yuri Milner even came up with a proposal a few years ago on how to achieve this journey in just a few decades, using a system of powerful lasers. Could a bird fly into space? A whole range of animals have already been sent into space for research purposes. Dogs, cats, monkeys, mice, turtles, worms, and cockroaches. Birds are probably the only ones missing from the list. Why aren't they suitable astronauts? Releasing a bird to fly to the sun, for example, would of course be impossible. And let's set aside the fact that it would suffocate without a spacesuit, and with a spacesuit, it couldn't flap its wings. It's precisely air that enables birds to fly. Thanks to the shape of their wings, the air moves faster above them than below, creating the necessary pressure difference. That's why most birds don't fly higher than 5 kilometers, while space begins 100 kilometers above the planet. Inside a space station, where there is artificial atmosphere, a bird might be able to fly, or rather glide through the space, but hygiene would then become an issue. Droppings would fly everywhere. And last but not least, in zero gravity, it wouldn't be able to eat. In humans, a series of contractions moves food from the esophagus to the stomach. But a bird has no such mechanism and needs gravity in order to swallow. What color is the universe? Is the universe colorful because images of nebulae and star clusters shine with every shade of the palette? No, these colors are created only through the processing of telescope images. Or is it black, as we imagine the space between stars? It's a bit different. Already in 2002, British astronomers Carl Glazebrook and Ivan Baldry conducted an analysis of the light from 200,000 galaxies. At that time, they were studying the age of stars and stellar systems, but of course, depending on the different wavelengths of radiation, we also perceive different colors. What would be the color of the universe if the colors from all the stars and galaxies were mixed together? This question occurred to the scientists, and at first they determined the color as light green. Later, however, they revised it, if an external observer saw the universe as a blurred blotch, they would perceive it as a gentle beige. But how to name the shade a bit more elegantly? Among a number of suggestions, such as skyvery, heavenly ivory, or univage, space beige, in the end cosmic latte one. Not only is it a type of white coffee, but in Italian it means milk and thus fits with the name Milky Way. How many moons does Earth have? You might be wondering how silly that question is when we have the answer in front of us every night. Our moon likely formed about 4.5 billion years ago after Earth collided with a protoplanet called Theia. However, a moon, 
in the sense of a natural satellite, can form in a less drastic way. The planet simply captures a smaller body from elsewhere in space through its gravity. Minimoons are then formed, such as 2006 RH-120, which orbited Earth for about a year, starting in July 2006. Or 2020 CD3, which orbited the planet for about three years before escaping its influence in May 2020. Both of these minimoons are a few meters across, so it's possible that there are many more like them. These objects usually orbit the Sun, but occasionally a planet borrows one. How many Earths would fit into the Sun? Are you looking at pictures of the solar system in books or on the Internet? Don't forget that all of them are very distorted. Distances and size differences between the bodies are actually many times greater. The Sun is gigantic compared to the other planets. It occupies an incredible 99.86% of the mass of the entire solar system. The mass of the Sun is about 330,000 times greater than the mass of the Earth. And when it comes to size, the Sun's diameter, which reaches roughly 1,400,000 kilometers, corresponds to 109 Earth diameters. If our planet were made of some soft material and could be shaped as needed, 1.3 million Earths would fit into a sphere the size of the Sun. On various diagrams, the planet is also shown way too close. If we imagine that the Earth is 150 million kilometer away from the Sun, with its diameter of 12,742 kilometers, it would fit almost 12,000 times along that distance. How close to the Sun could we still survive? The surface of the Sun is actually its coolest part. Even so, the temperature there reaches about 6,000 degrees Celsius. Anything living would instantly burn to ash. So how close can we get to the Sun without that happening? We're not going to walk there, of course. But if we travel in a properly designed spacecraft, it should withstand temperatures of around 2,500 degrees Celsius. That kind of heat exists at a distance of roughly 2 million kilometer from the Sun, and since the total Earth-Sun distance is approximately 150 million kilometer, we'd already be almost within reach. Outside a spacecraft, just in a spacesuit, things are different. A suit can only protect you from about 120 degrees Celsius, a temperature you'd experience at about 5 million kilometer from the Sun. Even so, you would break the current record held by the Parker Solar Probe. That spacecraft came closer to the Sun than any other human-made object. On Christmas Eve 2024, it got as close as 6.1 million kilometer. That's like circling the equator 150,000 times. Is it possible to see stars during the day? Of course it is. All day long, we can see a star called the Sun. But what about the stars that are just a bit farther away? If you want to catch sight of stars during the day, you have to look at the sky from the bottom of a deep well. That's what the Greek philosopher Aristotle advised, and it seems logical. The walls of the well protect us from direct sunlight, making the sky appear darker. According to astronomers, this is just a myth. However, some stars can still be seen during the day. We usually need a telescope to see them. The very first star observed through a telescope in broad daylight was Arcturus from the Boötes constellation in the year 1635. This star, with a diameter 25 times that of the Sun, is especially known for lighting up the lamps at the opening of the Century of Progress exhibition in Chicago in 1933 using photons captured from its light. The orange light of Arcturus can be spotted with the naked eye about three quarters of an hour before sunset. Similarly, under suitable conditions, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, can also be seen during the day without a telescope. Would a compass work in space? On Earth, a compass reliably points us north. The needle moves according to the planet's magnetic field. But what happens if we take it into space? Would it be of any use there? A compass contains a small piece of material that is always attracted to the magnetic north pole, even when we're standing in the southern hemisphere. And what if we're in space? Then it depends entirely on where we are. Earth's magnetic field extends about 100,000 kilometers from the planet, 
so within that range, the compass will still point toward Earth's magnetic north. But if we move beyond the magnetosphere, then the compass will latch onto another body's field, just like searching for the nearest mobile signal. Around the Moon or Mars, the compass would need to be very close, as their magnetic fields are weak. You're more likely to pick up the influence of Jupiter. And if we're not within range of any planet, then the compass will point toward the Sun. Its magnetosphere stretches across the entire solar system, though its magnetic poles flip roughly every 11 years. Still, in space, a compass won't be of much use. Navigating up there requires more directions than just the four we use on Earth. Is Mars really red? When someone says the red planet, everyone immediately knows which one is meant. That's why it was given the name of the Roman god of war as early as in ancient times. It reminded people of blood spilled in battles. But is Mars really as red as it seems? When you spot Mars in the sky, it will shine reddish purple. And the shade is confirmed even when observed through a telescope. The coloring of the planet comes from the large amount of iron oxide. So it looks as if it's completely rusted. However, if you were lucky enough to travel to Mars and see it with your own eyes, you would probably be disappointed. Mars would appear brown, maybe slightly orange. Definitely far from the color of blood that our ancestors imagined. The red effect is enhanced by the distance, but also by frequent storms that mix sand with the thin pinkish atmosphere. Moreover, Mars has its characteristic color only on the surface. If you raked off the top layer across the whole area, it would just be gray. Does the distance between the Earth and the Sun change over time? It's quite a journey, 150 million kilometers. Due to the elliptical orbit, the distance between the Earth and the Sun changes slightly during the year, but it always returns to the same values. Or are they not exactly the same? Very, very slowly, the Earth is moving away from the Sun. Because of the solar wind, which blows away a large number of particles, the mass of our star is slightly decreasing. And so it exerts less and less gravitational force on the planet. Tidal forces also play a role, the mutual interaction of the Sun, the Moon, and the Earth, because of which the Moon is also slowly escaping from us. The Moon causes tides on Earth, slows down the Earth's rotation, and lengthens the day. As a result, it actually speeds up and moves away from its current orbit, by about 4 centimeters per year. Similar things are happening between the Earth and the Sun. But the size difference between these bodies is quite a lot greater. So the Earth's escape from the Sun is negligible. 